we have a Jonathan Majors uh, update with the case. Um, so for anybody that does not know, or if you have not been following, um, you can definitely go check out uh, all my past videos. I've been following the Jonathan Majors case mainly because it could affect, you know, the MCU. Kang the Conqueror, who Majors plays, is a huge part of the plans. And depending on where this case goes and what happens, you know, um, that could affect the character, the stories, and so on and so forth. Um, so that's one of the main reasons why we're following this. Um, but we've been going back and forth with like the ins and outs of this case, um, just to kind of give you a very, very quick gist of it. Um, there was an altercation that happened back in March. Um, and it was a lot of, he said, she said stuff that was going on. Um, the charges that were filed, um, by Grace Jabari. She is the woman that, uh, majors was involved with at the time. Um, the charges claimed domestic violence, abuse, uh, physical assault, etc. Um, some of those charges have been dropped. Some of those statements have been recanted. However, the district attorney, they was like, uh, 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 we still want this. So even though, you know, the, the claimant, the alleged victim kind of stepped away, the, uh, the attorney general has stepped up and was like, no, nah, we going to press these charges on majors. Um, it should be clear that some charges have been dropped that were not sustained, such as the strangulation claim. Um, it was supposed that, you know, he strangled her and all this stuff, but they dropped that because clearly they couldn't defend it um, or, or prosecute it, I should say. Um, but then um, the prosecution has still kept up some charges um, that are misdemeanors, you know. Uh, some of them are like second or third degree harassment. Um, some of them are like second degree uh, assault, you know, but the caveat with that is they have to prove that substantial injury actually happened, you know. So this is why um, Jonathan Majors' lawyer has been outright with the evidence. And it's for two reasons. We have to realize that ever since Jonathan Majors got into these the news with this stuff, this man's career has been going downhill. Like he's been getting dropped by his team. He's been losing ads. He's been losing movie roles. Like a lot of stuff has been happening because of the court of public opinion. So his lawyer has been releasing and being very vocal with the media because it's a way to help bolster his his public image. That's not how you win in court, but that's a way you win in the court of public opinion. And one thing that I've tried to stress here on my channel is that I am trying my best to be impartial because I don't have all the information and neither do any of you. We all don't have all the facts or all the information of what has happened that night. The only thing we know so far is everything that Jonathan Major's lawyer has made available to the public. Again, that's not how it might go down in the actual courtroom, because in a courtroom, you don't listen to just one side. You listen to all sides, and you listen to all the evidence that's out. And so far, as I've been saying multiple times, we have not seen all the evidence. People say we saw the video. Which video? You only saw the video that Jonathan Major's uh, uh, lawyer showed you. You haven't seen what the prosecution has. We don't know what the prosecution has. Because if this were an open and shut case, if the prosecution didn't believe that they had compelling evidence, they would have dropped the charges. They just would have dropped it because it's a waste of time to try and pursue something that you don't have evidence for. So I've been trying to tell y'all, just wait and don't get your hopes up because all you going off of is part of the story. I've talked to so many friends of mine that are lawyers and it's funny at how they look at like the social media reaction because they like, people don't really understand how the law really works in a courtroom. I'm telling y'all, don't let these articles, don't even let me, don't let me fool y'all into how the court works. All I'm saying is, what gets reported and what y'all see is not the whole story. And we got to wait. We got to wait. But 
because of that, we do have an update here dealing with evidence, right? And this has to do with the evidence. Um, and, I, and forgive me here because some of the articles so far have been reporting different things. So I'm trying to, I'm going to bounce around from different articles here just so we can get as much uh, accuracy as possible. Um, but the Jonathan Majors domestic violence trial has been delayed. It's been delayed by uh, the NYC prosecutors. Um, and there's a reason for this. And the reason is why we got to talk about this here. It says here, after a brief court appearance in Manhattan on Thursday morning with the actor at her side, defense lawyer uh, Pira Chaudhry uh, blamed the delay on prosecutors' failure to turn over evidence for the Victor Timely actor in a timely manner. Oh, okay. It says here, prosecutors waited until Monday, the day before the scheduled trial, to turn over a two terabyte hard drive of prosecution evidence. Whoa. And on Thursday, prosecutors said in court that evidence was still being gathered in the case. So a new trial date of September 6th was set. This is exactly what I was talking about. Because I think like a lot of folks have been conditioned to law and order or other TV shows or movies with lawyers where they come up and they be like, yo, I got some evidence right here. Boom, case closed. Ha, ha, ha. No, that's not how it works. Clearly, what just happened here, the prosecution, yes, they waited to the last minute. I'm assuming that that's allowed. I'm not a lawyer, so I don't know, but I'm assuming that it is allowed to do that that you can bring in evidence, especially if it's new evidence, and you can present it. What you have to do during discovery, because discovery is that point where both sides have to show their evidence to the other side to give them a chance to either defend it or to go against it. You can't just show up the day of and be like, oh, look, I got a surprise witness. Y'all got to deal with it. No, that is going. if new evidence comes up, you can delay it or you can request the delay so that you have time to prepare. This is what I was saying from the jump. Y'all don't have all the information, and guess what? Neither did Jonathan Major's lawyer. She didn't have all the information either. She didn't have the, the, the evidence from the prosecution. Everything she showed y'all, everything we talked about, all the videos that we've seen, that was just the defense trying to win over the court of public opinion. We don't know if all the evidence Jonathan Major's lawyer has, we don't know if that evidence is going to refute the two terabytes of information that the prosecution has. Two terabytes. Yo, let me tell y'all something. I do videos. I work on videos. I, I, uh, uh, I video edit. So I and I work in IT. When you sit here and tell me that you need a two terabyte hard drive for anything. Oh, you got some stuff. That's not like you. Let me, how can I put this? You could probably foot put like. 10, 15. Full 4K movies. On that on that terabyte hard drive. So the question is, how much do you actually have? Now, maybe they don't have a full two terabytes. Maybe it's like a gig, you know, a terabyte and a half. I don't know, whatever. But the point is, this ain't something that fit on a flash drive. We're not talking about like, oh, I got this little witness testimony uh, that I want to submit. Clearly, the prosecution has, I don't know, video files, or maybe they have different testimonies recorded. I don't know, but whatever it is, it was new to the defense and it's clearly going to be new to all of us because they literally just submitted it. And the fact that they said that they are still gathering evidence, this is why I'm saying I don't think this is an open and shut case. Now, I don't know how good or bad the evidence is. It could be bunk. It could be trash. 
They could be like, man, we got all this evidence here. And maybe it's nonsense. Maybe. But it's not something that we should be like, well, close the book. It's all done. Case closed. No, it's not. Because now the uh, Jonathan Majors lawyer, they literally need this time to go review that evidence. They have to sit there and watch whatever amount of videos. They got to sit there and go through whatever the prosecution is going to try and throw at him. And they're going to have to defend it. For all we know, we might have to have a completely different defense. All the, in other words, all that time, and this is, again, I try to tell y'all, don't jump to conclusions. The lawyer so far, Jonathan Major's lawyer, kept talking about, oh, um, Jonathan Majors didn't hurt her when she went to the club or she went and did all this. There was no injury. There was nothing there. Well, you talking about the latter part of the night. What if, what if the prosecution talks about what happened before they got into the car ride? That's a whole different case. That's a whole different line of argumentation. You could sit here and say like, oh, when they were in the car, everything was cool. The driver said it was all fine. You could say that. The driver could attest to that. Street cam could show that. That's fine. But if the prosecution says, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're not even talking about what happened after. We're talking about what happened before. That's where we think the crime happened. Well, now you have to change up your whole defense. Now you're not talking about all this stuff that happened after. Now you got to figure out how are you going to defend your client ahead of time if that's what the prosecution is going to talk about. Again, if. And the reason why I bring this up is um, because this is actually what uh, hold on. This is actually what was brought up and this was in the LA Times. In the LA Times. It says here the accuser alleged that Majors struck her on the face with an open hand and cut her ear and grabbed her ha- and grabbed her hand. The woman also accused Majors of pushing her into a vehicle, causing her to fall backwards during the altercation. I didn't even hear about this. This is just now being reported. I didn't know. I mean, have y'all read the actual claims? I haven't. I haven't read the statements. The fact that the uh, LA Times is just now mentioning that she said that he pushed her into a vehicle and that caused her to fall backwards. All of that is before they even got into the car. So again, is that what the prosecution is going after? But It might not be all that great because while this did happen and while she accused him of pushing her into a car and making her fall backwards, Jonathan Majors kind of sort of admitted to that. When he went to go file a report against her to get her arrested on the incident report, Majors says he did pull away from her as she grabbed for his face, coat and phone. At another point, he admits that when their fight spilled into traffic, he hoisted her back into their chauffeured black Cadillac Escalade. He said, I was worried she would hurt, be hurt by traffic, so I physically picked her up and put her in the car. She said he pushed her into the car, made her fall back. He said... I had to pick her up and put her in the car to protect her. This is a he said, she said thing, right? Now, who's right? I don't know. I don't know who's right here. But the question is going to be on the prosecution. How are they going to try and spin it? Are they going to spin it and say, see, he pushed her and he was violent and he caused injury? Maybe that's what they're going to say. And maybe the defense is going to be like, Nah, your client was wilding and she was crazy in them streets and my client saved her life. But we have to wait and see because it's not about what they say or what they do. It's about what you can prove in the court of law. So, you know, 
Um, we're going to keep an eye on this case, of course, uh, and keep it going. You know, hopefully, like I said, this gets resolved quickly. Um, I will still maintain being in the middle because I, based off of these reports, we clearly don't have enough information. We don't know enough because for all we know, if the prosecution has some crazy video of Jonathan Majors doing something wild, this could flip quick. If the information that the prosecution brings up is whack, this could end quick. But we got to wait and see what happens when it happens. So uh, I don't know, but y'all let me know. Um, oh, by the way, um, she still got a... Uh, uh, an I card or whatever. The NYPD is still looking for Grace Jabari. So if she does come back, if she does come back to the United States, because right now she's in London, oh, they can arrest her. She's done for. You know. Now whether they'll do it or not, I don't know. Whether charges will be pressed, I don't know. But they are still looking to arrest her right now. So anyway. We'll see how this goes. I'll keep you guys up to date. Um, but I want to thank y'all so much. Um, and uh, please let me know what you think about these uh, Jonathan Majors updates. Um, what do you think about the prosecution having two terabytes worth of information uh, of last minute evidence and still ongoing evidence supposedly against Jonathan Majors? Um, what do you think about the delay? Whatever you think, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. This was just a segment of one of my live chats, and if you're interested in joining in on the next one, be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications for more. I've got more videos and reviews to do for you all, and until next time, I'll see you all later.